In this part of the Express.js tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to write integration and end-to-end -end tests for your Express server. So integration tests and unit tests basically involve testing your entire application. At least with integration tests, you typically are testing certain scenarios and flows in your application. Like for example, create a user and then expect that user to uh, return as a response and then try logging in as that user after you've created. That's an example of writing an end-to-end -end test. Okay, you have different scenarios. It's a lot different than unit tests, where unit tests, you are only testing one piece of your entire code base, like one single function. And many of you who have seen the previous section where I showed you how to write unit tests may actually find writing integration tests to be a lot more easier because you don't have to worry about setting up a bunch of mocks, okay? Some people do get confused with how to mock and what to actually mock. But with integration and end-to-end -end tests, you just call your API and then you write assertions. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually disable the OAuth 2 configuration with the Discord strategy right over here. I'm going to comment it out and I'm going to uncomment out the local strategy because I want to actually use local authentication. We're not going to be testing OAuth 2. We're going to be testing actual local authentication where we create a user and then we can log in with that user and then we will verify that the user was created and that we've logged in. So let me just do that. So just uncomment this file. Everything else is set up the way that it should be. And then we should have our both serialized and deserialized user functions. Okay, so we're done with this part. Just want to do that very quickly. Now let's go ahead and install super test. So you're going to type npm i hyphen d super test. And we're going to use super test with jest. They both work very well with each other. And we already have jest set up already. So if you missed the previous section of this tutorial where we configured jest and wrote some unit tests, check out at least the first 10 minutes of the video where, or maybe like the first five to six minutes where we set up jest. Okay. Then come back to this video, but all the code is going to be in a GitHub link in the description. So check that out. So you don't have to like, you know, watch the whole thing. You just copy the code and get the setup and then come back to this video. So I installed super test. Now let's go ahead and go back to our code. What we're going to do is we're going to create a folder inside the source folder and I'm going to call it E2E like this because I want to keep all of my unit tests separate from my end-to-end -end tests because it's good practice to do that. And it's also industry standard as well. And I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this index.spec.js or you can call it index.test.ts if you prefer. Okay. And I'm not going to, I'm going to leave this blank for now. I'm not going to write anything just yet inside this new file. What we need to do is we're going to go into our package.json file and we're going to add a new test script, but I'm going to call it test colon E2E. So that way I can run either only unit tests or only end-to-end -end tests. For the test E2E script, the way it's going to look like is we're still going to be using the just binary. So again, make sure you have just installed and configured. And then we're going to use this test path pattern flag and have it point to the source, the source slash E2E folder. So that way when I run test colon E2E, it's going to go ahead and only run the tests inside this folder over here. Okay, so we can run just the end-to-end -end tests and not the unit tests with it. Okay, so we're done with this. Now we're going to go ahead into our index.spec.js file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import super test from super test like this. And then I'm just going to show you a very easy example right now. I'm going to import express and I'll set up a very simple express server with literally nothing, no middleware, nothing. Okay. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to call the express function and I'm going to register a simple test route. So I'll call that route. Hello. And we're just going to send back a status code of 200. Okay. And then now to actually use super test, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the describe function. Again, this comes from Jest, So make sure you have Jest configured and I'm going to go ahead and call this hello endpoint. Just something simple. And then I'm going to pass in that callback function and inside the callback function for describe. This is where we're going to have all of our tests. So I'm going to use the it function that's part of just to write 
my actual test. So I'm going to go ahead and just say get hello endpoint. Or well, actually, let me do get hello and expect 200. Okay, so I have one test inside my describe callback function over here. And I can add more tests if I want to. So this is where we're going to actually call our API. So we're going to use this function actually. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not super test from super test, it's import request from super test, or that's how you should name it, import request from super test, because this is actually a function. So let me just, I just fixed that real quick. Sorry about that. So let me just invoke this request function, which is this super test module over here. Again, this is the top level function that we're importing. And then we're just going to pass our app instance like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call the get method. So whatever endpoint that we want to make a request to and whatever method type, you would use that one. So for a get request, I would use get. For post, I would do post. So I'll do get and then the URL. So hello. And then you want to pass in a callback function if you need one, but I don't need one right now. So after the get, I can go ahead and use uh, this expect method at the end. So I'm chaining this expect, expect method on the return value of get. And then what I can do is I can expect a status code like this. I can do expect 200. And now let's go ahead and run the test. So we're going to run the test by using this test E2E command that I just set up earlier. So npm run test colon E2E like that. And our test should pass. There we go. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Not sure why it took forever. It might be because we did not end the request. But I can do at the end of the expect call, I can do end and then error res and I can do if error throw error like this and that should fix that error and in, in the last part yep there we go perfect so you can see that the test passes and of course if i were to change the status code inside this app.get inside this request handler if i were to change it to 201 to kind of like throw off this test over here and show you what happens so let's do npm run test e2e so the test should fail you'll see that the error actually uh, is thrown right over here the problem here, though, is that even though we are expecting 200 over here, and keep in mind, this is the expect method that is on super test, not from jest, okay? You can see that right now over here, it still treats the test as passing, even though the test shouldn't pass. And um, even if I were to write an assertion inside this callback function for the end method call, so if I were to do expect, and then we have this res argument, which is the response, so res.status code to be 200. And if I run the test again, the test actually will still be considered passing. Let me remove this expect as well. Okay, you can see that the test actually is still considered passing right over here, even though it actually is supposed to fail. Now to fix this, instead of having to do uh, dot end, like right over here, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And so instead of that, we're going to go ahead and actually await this dot get call because this actually returns a promise. If you look at the end over here, you can use dot then or dot catch like that. So I'm going to add the async keyword in front of the callback function for the it function or test. And I'm going to go ahead and do const res equals await. So this is the response object right over here. You can see that the return value, the resolved value is a response. Let me name it response. Okay. And now what I can do is I can write an assertion on the response, the status code, and I'll say response.status code to be 200. So this should fail because the endpoint actually returns a 201. And now the test actually fails. So this is exactly what we want. Of course, if you wanted to write an assertion on the response body, there's this body property on the response object and then you can use assertions such as to be or to equal or to strict equal 
or to contain whichever matcher you feel like you need. So for example, I can do to B an empty object and let's see what happens. Uh, let me first fix this back to 200. And of course you can see the test fails because we're not returning a response body. So let's fix that. Let me go ahead and set the status to 200 and also send some JSON and empty response body. And let's run the test again. And let's see. Uh, I think let's do to equal since it's an object. Okay, there we go. Now it passes. Okay, it does suggest to use too strict equal as well. Right up top over here. That's why it was erroring out. Okay, and if I try to pass in the wrong object like this, let's run the test. And you can see that the assertion fails. So hopefully this makes sense. Now, I just want to show you this quick example. We're now going to go ahead and actually set up our end-to-end -end tests for our application. So this will actually require us to grab our app instance right over here, because what we need to do is similar to um, what we're doing in here. We need to pass that app instance into the request function as an argument, as you can see over here. Okay, so inside our application right over here, inside index.mjs, this is where we actually have our express app created and we have all of our middleware set up so the thing is though we need to make sure that we can export our app and import it into our test files our end-to-end -end test files so that way all of the routes and all of the uh, middlewares and anything else is actually going to be registered the other issue is that because in our file we're not only just registering middleware but you can see right over here, I am trying to also invoke the database as well. So there are actually a few things that we need to do just to get this to work. And so the good thing is it's not going to be a big deal to do this. So what I'll do is I'll create a new file and I'll call this, uh, let's see, create app.mjs. And all I'm going to do is just export this function create app like that and I'm just going to literally take let's see I'm going to take all of this stuff right over here and I'm going to paste that in here and then what I'm going to do is this I'm going to go ahead and pass an instance of app like that so then I can reference app right over here and I also need to make sure I'm registering all of my middleware, which I am. And I also need to import all of the middleware as well. All the imports right over here. As well as right here. Okay. And um, let me see. Uh, additionally, you know what? Actually, I'm going to create the app inside the function instead. And let me import express up over here. So let me delete all of these imports in the index files because we won't need them anymore. Okay, so what I can do now is I can call create app and I want to actually return the app instance. So when I call create app, it'll run through all of these. It'll, it'll call all of these functions. It's going to register all of the middlewares right over here, all of the routes, and it's going to uh, return app. So once all of the middlewares and all of the routes are registered, it's going to return this app instance to wherever we called it. So now what I can do is inside the index.mjs file, I can go ahead and first let me import create app like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do const app equals create app. And we don't have any asynchronous uh, logic going on here, so that's good. So we can just call create app. And now the next thing is, is we need to also make it so that when we run our end-to-end -end tests or integration tests, that we're also able to connect to the database as well. So this alone is just fine for our development application. Like if I were to just run my code right now for just development, everything would still work the same way. You can see that's still going to uh, 
reference the app and then call app.listen to actually start up the server. Oh, Mongoose is not defined, I think. Oh, I think, let me see, where where was it over here? Um, Did I reference that in here? Oh yeah, let me import Mongoose in here as well, inside the create app.mjs method, because we do reference it down over here. Forgot about that. And then cannot in a client, please provide correct options. Okay, so the other problem here is that it does require the mongoose connection. So what I can do is I can move the mongoose connection up top over here, and now it works. Okay, so it's just an, it's just a matter of ordering things. So first I'm connecting to the MongoDB database, so I'm calling mongoose.connect. Then I am initializing the app because the application does require the connection to exist first. So now what I can do is let me remove uh, this app.get, let me remove all of this for now and instead of just calling express i'm going to remove that let me remove this import of express i'm going to go ahead and import the create app like this okay so now we actually have our express app in this variable like our actual app not the fake one that we just created just now but we still need a connection to the database and that's okay because what i can do is i can actually just copy all this stuff over here and i can just paste it right in here and I can just import mongoose from mongoose and I can change the database that it is connecting to so I can change it from expressatorial to expressatorial test like that and I can say connected to the test database and now let's go ahead and try to test a very simple endpoint so I have let's see do I have any simple endpoints that I can set up? Um, let's do this one. Let's do the API slash auth slash status endpoint. Let me remove all these logs. So what this should do is we're going to write an assertion to return a 401 because we're not authenticated currently. So inside our test file, let's go ahead and do describe API auth. And then what I'll do is say it should return 401 when not logged in and let me add the async keyword in front of the callback function for our test and i'm going to do const response equals await so i'm going to call the request function that's the super test right over here i'm going to pass in our app and then we need to go ahead and call get and then go ahead and pass in the url that we want to visit so slash api slash auth slash status just like that and then now i can write an assertion on the response dot status code to be 401 so let's actually run our test and see what happens so npm run test or i'm sorry npm run test e2e okay and you can see uh, let's see, right over here, you can see that it is logging in the console right over here. It says connected to test database, and our tests are passing, so that's good. So it is actually calling the endpoint, um, and it passes because we are expecting the status code of 401, which it is actually giving it to us. And of course, we get this issue where um, the test did not exit after the test completed. So I think it's likely because of our database connection right over here mongoose.connect let me actually do this i'm going to copy this and i'm going to go inside the describe block and then right before the test i'm going to go ahead and use this before all function this is a lifecycle hook so basically this function takes in a callback function and before all of your tests that's why it's called before all it will run whatever is inside this logic over here you can see before all of our tests, it's going to connect to the database. So there's before all, there's also before each. Before each will run before every test, and we don't want that because we only want to connect to the database one time. And then let me just make sure this still works as expected. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so I think the problem is, oh, wait, whoops. Let me do this. Uh, it does require a little bit of tinkering. But what I need to do is because we're trying to create the app first before the database connection. So let me actually do this. Let me declare a variable up here called app, like that, using the let keyword. 
and I'm going to reassign uh, the value of whatever create app returns to app. And so that way I can reference it inside here. Okay, there's a bunch of different ways you can set this up. So this is not only one way. This is not the only way to do it. There are different ways of how you can configure this. But this should work. Okay, perfect. And now to fix this part, we're going to go at the end of our test. I'm going to go ahead and use this after all hook. Okay, so it's pretty much the opposite of before all. So after all your tests, what we want to do, and this is the part where I mentioned earlier, or maybe in the previous section of this tutorial, where you want to actually drop the database as well as close the connection to the database. So you can do that by referencing mongoose.connection, drop database. Um, and then you can see it says helper for drop database deletes the given database, including all collections documents and indexes. So that will drop the database that we are connected to, which is the test database. And this returns a promise. So we will need to await that. So let's add the async keyword and await this. And after we drop the database, let's go ahead and close the connection. Yeah, I think it's, yep, drop, not drop, sorry, close. And then this will close the connection right over here. And then this should fix that uh, warning that we have over here. Okay, there you go. You see how now the tests actually gracefully exit. And this is important because if you have your end-to-end -end test or really any test running in a pipeline, it's going to block your pipeline from proceeding to the next job. So it's very important that you resolve these situations. Okay, but we have a pretty good setup right now. So let's go ahead and actually continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write an end-to-end -end test. I'm going to I'm going to write a scenario, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a user first, verify that the user is created, and then we're going to try to log in and then verify that we're logged in. I know it's a lot, but don't worry, we'll take it step by step. Ideally, you always want to make sure you are separating your tests. You don't want to like have them all together. So what I can do is I will go ahead and create a new file. I'll call this user.spec.js or really whatever it is that you want to describe it as. And we can just literally copy this whole thing and paste it here. So I'll just call this uh, create user and login and just have the same exact setup like this. Um, let's see. Yep, everything else is good. And then let's just delete that because our test is going to be different. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually create the user. So let me go ahead and do this. It should create the user. And keep in mind that we're not going to be testing everything in one single test block. We're going to be doing everything in sequential order. So first thing is we're going to test that the user is created. So it should create the user. And we're going to go ahead and make a request. So let's call the request function, pass in our app instance. And then we're going to go ahead and call a post request this time. And the endpoint is going to be slash API slash auth slash user. And let me just verify that route right over here. Yep. Router that post API users, or I'm sorry, it's, I don't know why I added auth. It's API users with an S. And then it's going to go ahead and call this middleware function. This is the express validator. So this is where we can actually also make sure that the validation is working as well. Uh, we have create user handler is called, which is our request handler. And it's going to basically run through all this logic. So again, in the previous section of this tutorial where we went over unit testing, I showed you how to unit test this whole function. This time we don't have to worry about mocking anything. It's going to call this function and it's going to run the actual logic. It's going to call the actual functions from Express Validator. It's going to call our own hash password function. It's going to create the user and it's going to actually save it to the database using Mongoose. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our test file. Oops, sorry about that. All right, so we're going to make a post request. And let's go ahead and send a request body. So uh, to send the request body, you can use this send method like that. Whoops, not sure why that is. 
send. Yep. And then you can pass in an object. So we need to send the username. So for the username, I'll do Adam123 password. Let's do password and then display name. Just do Adam the developer. Okay, so when we send this request, it's going to handle it on the server side. We don't obviously care about what's going on on the server side with this because we're trying to just care about what the response is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is after this whole thing is done, we also want to await this call because remember this dot send method also returns a promise as well. So let's await that. And now let's write an assertion. Let's do response.status code to be 201. Okay. So let's run our test. So let's do npm run test e2e. So this should run all of our tests for us. And you can see both tests pass. And you can see in the console that that's, I think that's the salt from the hash password function that's being logged. If I am correct. Yep, it's the salt. Let me remove this console log. But you can see that both tests are passing. So that's good. And you can see that they don't conflict with each other. And one more thing that I also want to show you is if I open up my MongoDB compass tool, okay, and if I were to actually, let me see, not this one, but it shouldn't be connecting. Yeah, it should not connect to this Express tutorial database. It should connect to the test database. So you know what? Let me remove this line over here and show you what happens when I run the test. Okay, so now watch this. If I refresh the page or refresh this application, uh, what is this new version available? Let me click X. You can see that now this express tutorial test comes up and you can see that our collection, our users collection is inside the express tutorial test database and so is our sessions. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. But the reason why we didn't see it before is because we dropped the database. And the reason why we dropped the database is because we don't want the test data from previous test suites to conflict with other tests. Okay, I'll explain more about that later on. Because right now, you might wonder, okay, well, we do need the data with this user in the next test. But yes, that's within the same test suite. In other test suites, like in other scenarios, you don't want to have leftover data in the database conflicting with that scenario because you might have a scenario where you're only expecting one user but there might be three users because you didn't clear the database okay all of those tests that you ran kept creating a new user and because you didn't drop the database the users kept adding on into the database collection and your assertions are going to fail so let's go ahead and continue so after we create the user let's actually log in so what we'll do is this i'm going to first manually drop my database let me just do that because it will error out if it creates a duplicate okay so we drop the database good let's go ahead and go back to our code so now we'll do this it should log the user in and we're going to make a request a post request this time to slash api slash auth yep i think it's just slash api slash auth and then we're going to send our whoops i don't know why it keeps doing set encoding send username so the same username that we configured up top over here so adam123 and then the same password and then let's go ahead and get the response in a variable Okay, so let's just go back to our auth. I think I put that right over here. Yep, so it should send back a status of 200 on success. Okay, uh, I think with Passport, let me just double check everything. Yep, I think everything here is good. So let's continue. So expect response status code to be 200. Now let's go ahead and run our test. Make sure that it passes. Okay, so now it says, uh, let's see, now it failed. And let's see what's going on over here. It says received 500. So it seems like the back end, or there might be something wrong with the back end for it to send back a 500. So I'll actually just console log 
the response body and see what that message says. Because it sent back a status code of 500, so that's obviously not good. Let's see. Okay, so it says... Um, maybe not response.body, but maybe... Let's just do response. Okay. So it says right over here that unknown authentication strategy. Okay. So I know what the problem is. The problem is that it doesn't recognize our local strategy. And I think it's likely because of the way that we moved everything into here. So I'm trying to think what would be the easiest way to do this because if I were to actually remove this create app and then move everything back into the index file, I would need to export the app and that would require me to import the index file, which would also call this mongoose.connect code and I don't want that to happen. So the only other option is I would have to essentially move this to a separate file and then it would also call this app.listen which I don't want. So we don't want to import this index file at all. So I think the other thing that I might need to do is I might need to import this strategy into the create app probably. Maybe like right over here. And I think maybe that might fix that. So let's try to run the test again and see if that same issue occurs. Okay, so you can see that the error goes away now. So it, it, it seemed like this import did fix that. I guess because we had it over here, uh, it was what was causing the problem. So let me move this as well over over to here. Okay. Um, I guess it has to be inside the scope. Since I guess this is where we are creating the app. And we are initializing passport here. So maybe that's the reason why. I'm not too sure. But at least we fixed that part. So now we can go back over here and let me remove this console log and... We just rerun the test. We know that it's passing though. Okay. And you can even see in the console log from the actual source code right over here, it is logging the user over here. And if we go to, where is the local strategy? Right here. Yep. You can see that it should be logged. Yeah, it's being logged right over here inside the serialized user function. And it says inside serialized user and it logs the user itself. And then after successful authentication, the endpoint right over here sends back a status code of 200. Okay, so we verified that we were able to successfully log in. Now, additionally, what you can do is you can write some more assertions on the response object. They have this property called, I think it's headers. Yep, headers. And what you can do is you can check to see if the headers actually has the cookie that you expect because this response that headers object is actually just an object that has the cookies property so let me show you real quick what that looks like right over here yep you can see that we have this set cookie property which seems to be an array so i guess what you could do is you can look to see if the array contains this uh cookie name right over here so that's one thing that you could do but I'll let you all take care of that. So now inside this second test, we are trying to log the user in. So now once we've logged the user in, then we should have a session and we should be able to visit the auth slash status endpoint and get a response back with our user record because that's who we are logged in as. So let's go ahead and try that out. So I'll say for the test, it should visit API slash auth slash status and return logged in user let me just call this authenticate authenticated user and i want to show you what happens when we try to do this so we're going to make a get request this time to slash api slash auth slash status and we're going to assert that the status code returned is 200 and Let's see if this passes. And you'll notice now that it actually fails. Okay, it gives it gives us back a 4-1. And so I think the reason why this happens, I don't know the exact reason, but I will tell you what I think because I ran into this issue myself. So 
when we run our test, they are running in order, okay? They are running this one first, this one first, and this one first. But when we run this test right over here, it doesn't actually uh, persist the cookies for the next request. So, for example, we do receive cookies inside this inside this API call right over here, okay? We do have cookies inside this second test, and those cookies are being sent from the server. However, in this third test, when, I, when we try to make a GET request to this protected endpoint, we need to obviously send the cookies, but in the context right over here, we don't have the cookies sent. So I think because of that reason, uh, it is giving us back that 401 because it's treating us as if we never logged in. So the way around this is to actually implement this logic inside just one test. So I'll go into this second test over here and I'll say for the, for the title, should log the user in and visit API slash auth slash status and return auth user, okay? And so what we'll do is after we call this send method, I can actually use the dot then method and then I'll get the response of the post request because remember I'm using the dot then method to resolve the promise for this request dot post method. And then that would resolve the value of whatever dot post was going to return. Okay, whatever the promise was going to resolve. So inside this then I'm going to pass in a callback function which gives me access to that response for that post request to the API slash auth endpoint. So inside here, what I can do is I can actually return request.app. So I can make another request right after this post request is finished. And I can make a get request and I'm going to paste that URL over here. And then what I can do is I can also set the cookies. So I can use this set function and then I want to set the cookie. And then we need to just pass in this array of cookies, which we can easily grab if we reference res.headers. And I think the property was called set hyphen cookie, I think. Or set cookies. Let me actually just double check real quick. Let me do this. Let me console log this. Okay. But then what will happen is we send the cookies along with this request. And so this response, so after we await this whole thing, this response up top over here is the response for the actual get request. Okay. So then right over here, we can write assertions on the status code on the response body. So let me go ahead and remove this third test because we won't need that anymore. And let me go ahead and run the test again. And let's see, invalid value undefined. Um, let's see, headers. It may have been set cookie instead of set cookies. Maybe that's why it's giving us back undefined. Yep, it's set cookie. Okay, yep, that's fine. So let's go ahead and change this to set cookie. So this will pass all the cookies, send it to the server. And let's go ahead and run the test again. And now you can see that our tests pass and specifically this second test pass with all of our API calls. And you can even see on the server side, it goes through the serialized user function and then it goes through the deserialized user function. So this is invoked whenever we make a next request after we first log in. Okay, so everything is working as expected. And if I want, I can write some more assertions on the response body. So I can do response.body.username to be Adam123 for the display name. Let's do that as well. To be Adam the developer. And let's run our tests and see what happens. And you can see all of our tests pass. So I hope that this shows you how to write integration tests as well as end-to-end -end tests. I hope that you better understand how to 
do it and how to set it up in a way that makes it effective. And this will be the last tutorial for the entire ExpressJS series. I'm still going to make more ExpressJS tutorials. It's just not going to be part of this specific uh, long series that I designed. So I hope that you all enjoyed watching this series. If you watched the whole entire thing, like I said before, the code will be on GitHub. I'm going to leave a link in the description as well so you all can access it. You're more than welcome to ask questions down below in the comment section. I check my comments every single day and I respond whenever I get a chance to. If you need additional help, visit the Discord server. The link is in the description as well. You can go onto the Discord server and get help with your programming issues, uh, talk to other developers, um, just, you know, just, just hang out and whatever. So, yeah, like I said, I hope you all enjoyed this whole ExpressJS tutorial. And that is going to be it for this one. So I will see you all in my next episode. Peace out.